We are pleased to welcome Sally Mott Freeman, author of The Jersey Brothers, a missing naval officer in the Pacific and his family's quest to bring him home. Good to see you, Sally. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are not going to spoil this for anyone. We okay. want people to go out and get this book. Um, real life story of three brothers. Yes. Set it up for us. Three naval officers. World uh, War II? Uh, World War II. All of them went to the Naval Academy. Uh, two much older than the youngest. Um, one class of 30, one class of 33. And the youngest entered the Academy in 36. And uh, he only made it through two years, finished at uh, Chapel Hill. By then, the mandatory draft had been uh, signed into law, and my father, who was the middle brother, helped him get a commission in Say the Navy. Say it again, your father. My father, Bill, who was the middle brother, naval intelligence officer, helped his youngest brother get a commission with the Navy Supply Corps. Yes. Talk about that. My father, Bill, is the one in the middle, and this youngest, Barton, who was unaccounted for at the end of World War II, uh, uh, this is his high school graduation. You see, he was quite small. He was, um, he was a premature baby the beloved youngest um, member of this family. And the fellow on the right, uh, Benny, uh, was the gunnery officer on the USS Enterprise uh, uh, Naval Academy, class of 30. So World War II broke out. My father was, um, was uh, ordered to the White House from Naval Intelligence to set up a secret map room in the basement. And the, the, the State Department didn't know about it. What was it. the year? 19, it was the very beginning of 1942. Right after, you know, within weeks after Pearl Harbor. So Roosevelt. Yes, Roosevelt. FDR. FDR, and the uh, and Benny uh, was on the USS Enterprise, returning to Pearl Harbor a day late. They arrived on December eighth. Uh, they were uh, delivering bombers to Wake Island, and so they narrowly escaped Pearl Harbor. And it was one of the few uh, ships uh, unscathed by that in the Pacific. And it went out again and again and again, the Doolittle Raid, all the early hit and run uh, raids, uh, Midway, uh, and other um, mm -hmm. early battles, the most decorated warship in American naval history. And, but this youngest brother was sent to the Philippines right after he was commissioned, and he was wounded and listed as missing. And it's really about the search for the youngest brother by the, by the older two. And uh, it, was a, it was a very painful, repressed family mystery for my father after the war. Uh, it caused a lot of tension um, with, with his parents. And, um, what about for you? Uh, well, and then, you know, the, the children of that conflict, you know, if it's an unresolved um, issue, um, you know, it, it, it recedes in time, but it does not recede in corrosive effect on family. Because you see your parent really struggling with this. And he had a certain explanation for what happened, and uh, my grandmother disagreed with it. And so I went, I, I found his White House files when I was in organized. your 10 years of research? 10 years of research, I found his White House files in the beginning of his own search for his missing brother from the White House map room, and several um, uh, letters back and forth with Benny on the Enterprise, you know, sort of trying to um, uh, sort of lay the groundwork for this search. Uh, and um, several comments about his conversations with Roosevelt, who was very sympathetic, also had a son in the Pacific. That's right. And um, I, I was intrigued, and I sort of picked up where he left off. I went to the Philippines. I went to all the prison camps. I interviewed former prisoners of war, people that my father's first hire in the White House map room, uh, who was extremely helpful, um, fellow um, uh, sailors on the Enterprise with, with Benny, the eldest. And mm -hmm. I did find out what happened, and it was a shocking revelation, because it was entirely different from what the family was told in the 40s. You also so many pieces, so many aspects of your research. Your grandmother's diary? Yes, uh, diaries. She, she diaries, kept diaries cool. during World War II. And I found my dear cousin in, in New Jersey, who actually had a box of stacked with letters from former prisoners of war talking about their experiences, many of whom I found. And he said, you know, I, I think that she had diaries, but I'm, I think that they were lost. And so um, three years later, I, I had a, a fairly workable draft. And he came to my own mother's funeral at Arlington Cemetery. And before we left to sort of caravan uh, over to Arlington, he put a stack of books on my desk, and they were her wartime diaries. And I, I, I read them that night. It was sort of this curious mix of losing my mother but rediscovering my grandmother, mm. a side of her, frankly, that I really had never seen. And so I started over and threaded her voice into the story because it was really crucial. She was right, by the way.
Um, she wrote letters to Roosevelt, Truman, the secretaries of the Army, the Navy, congressmen, senators. She needed to know. She, she was a mom, and she was maybe the original helicopter mother. Yeah. And she was very astute. She was a Wellesley graduate. She graduated from college at a time when 3% of the women in this mm -hmm. country went to college. And she was uh, sort of type A, you know. She, she wanted to know. And she was not alone, because there were many parents and families of men trapped in the Philippines on Bataan and on Corregidor. And, and Roosevelt's strategy was Europe first, and then we, you know, avenge so they the defenders. About them? They, they felt these families felt. They <clears throat> said Germany didn't attack this country. Japan did. Let's go. Let's but go save the these men. But they were in the Philippines, and we didn't have the resources to go get them. So the, the, it was really part. She was part of a movement called the Bataan Relief Organization that put a lot of pressure on Washington to um, to amend their policy. And of course, here my father was working at Roosevelt's elbow when his mother just would not quit writing oh, wow. letters. But in retrospect, you know. Incredible story. In the limited time we have left, let me ask you, what has this book done for you? Oh, well, first of all, it's given me tremendous closure because I saw my father struggle with this. It, would, it, was, it didn't come up a lot, but when it sprang from its dark corner, it was, you know, di usually a difficult stretch um, in the family. It was a wonderful writing experience. I've been a writer my entire career, but this was a new project for me. And... Um, it's, uh, it's been an amazing experience. I mean, I won't say I didn't shed a few tears as I discovered, made some discoveries, uh, but it was, um, it was a work of passion, labor of love, and it's had an amazing reception. So I couldn't be happier. Finally, for so many families struggling, <coughs> excuse me, to find out. What's oh yes, there are over forty thousand families in this country who's uh, who, who have a loved one that did not return from a foreign war, all wars, and I have had uh, you know hundreds of letters. How did I pursue this? How did I pursue that? Because for them, there's no closure, and closure is what they crave. And um, so I spend as much time talking uh, about my book as I do trying to help them. You know, go to the resource. The, re the resources have expanded, and. Um, you know, if it helps one person achieve the closure that I achieved for my own family, I'll have done my job. We thank you. Uh, we thank you very much, Sally thank Mott you. Freeman. The book is called The Jersey Brothers, A Missing Naval Officer in the Pacific and His Family's Quest to Bring Him Home. Extraordinary work. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining it's us. Great to be here. We'll be right back right after this. Also brought to you by the New Jersey State Nurses Association and the Institute for Nurses and by Summit Medical Group.